I have went to the internets and found the Mary Sue, which gave me the list that I'm going to offer up to you guys tonight. Is it gave a list, and I agree with it for the most part. Maybe we introduce you to some Marvel characters that you never knew existed. As we've got the eight worst comic book characters, actually ten of them, ever. And I am going to start. You know what? Let's go ahead and start at number one and work our way to ten. How about that? Oh, you want to go backwards? You know what? You want to go? You want to go oh, ten? Normally, you start at ten and you work your way down. You know what? Fine. Let's start at ten. Talk me into it. Sweet. Can I talk you into hating soccer? No, you can't. You sure can't. At number 10, we've got somebody who isn't terrible, but it's pretty much a one-trick pony, and that's one Bailey Hoskins. He looks like Richie Cunningham. A little bit. So, Bailey Hoskins, um, personality-wise, is actually not that bad. Um, He's a mutant, but here's the thing. His power is, is he can blow himself up. What? Yes, that's his power. I mean, that's kind of a good bit, right? It is, except for he can only do it once, because once he does it, he's dead. Oh, well, then it's not a good bit. No, it's not a good bit at all. So how, do you, how does he know he can do it? He knows he can do it because that's the mutant power that he has, right? So, like, he goes and finds out he's a mutant and he's afraid of this feeling that he has inside. So, Xavier is the one that finds out that, well, this is your power through Cerebro and what That's have you. even weirder. You can only do it once and then you're dead. Like, then, then when would you use it? So, how are you a hero? Right. That's the thing. It sounds more like you're a terrorist bomber. So the, the X-Men, by the way, did give him a powered suit to make up for the fact that he has no powers, but still a lot of questions. Why are you an X-Men? Why don't you just not explode and go be a regular human being? Because oh. if as long as you don't explode, then nobody's going to know you're a mutant, so therefore you can go just live with the rest of everybody and not have to you know worry about being called a mutie or whatever. So I'm getting lit up about soccer. Look, somebody said the earliest recorded reference of soccer was 206 BC. Right. Yeah, in your brain, not in America. No, I mean, because America wasn't de- around at that uh, point. It should have been. We're going to number nine real quick as we get to the man, the myth. He is Puck. Wasn't he on Real World? <laughs> he he might have been. So this is Eugene Milton Judd, otherwise known as Puck. Wait, what is Saskatchewan Steel? I love that, whatever it is. That's... Like a nickname or something? Yeah, that's that's his battle cry. So he's Canadian, eh? He is he is Canadian. Oh, he's my favorite. I mean, his name is Puck. That's true. So now he was um he's a normal guy at the beginning of everything. And then he's attacked by a demon who manages to get inside him, and the demon sucks up his life force. But instead of his quote life force getting sucked up. It shrunk him down to three foot six. Huh. So he's Danny DeVito. Now, here's the thing. It it also made him kind of rubbery, but also made him stronger than he was when he was taller. All right. So he's faster and stronger, and he's made of rubber. So he gets the nickname Puck. It have been prophylactic, man. So, yeah. By the way, also, even though the demon sucked his life force away, it also gave him immortality. Of course it did. So I'll take that. Would you would you trade immortality for right. a rubber penis? No. Like if you had to, if you could be immortal, but you had to have a rubber penis. You can't feel your penis anymore? Still feel it, right? Not if it's made of rubber. Well, it's Rubber, but has feelings. Okay, but it, like some women, is it what is it like hard rubber all the time? I don't know. Whatever he is, what's he? Well, he's pretty tough rubber, like Elastic Man or Stretch Armstrong rubber. No, he's tough rubber. He's a hockey puck. 
Oh, I'd definitely take a hockey puck penis. Okay. Mark. So there you go. And also, yes, please mark that. <laughs> Let's go from there to number eight. This is forget me not. <laughs> He's a mutant who has a very weird power as unless he's talking directly to you, you will forget he exists. Wish I had that superpower. So it was revealed that he was part of the, everything that's happened with the X-Men up to date. He's always been there, but nobody remembers him. And he just appeared in a comic one day. And by the way, here's forget me not. He's here. He's been here the whole time. Just nobody remembers. Just nobody remembers. That him. is an excellent bit for the writers. His, his power of imperceptibility is his thing. Now, it also enables him to get in close with people and, of course, do whatever needs to be done because nobody remembers yeah. that he was there as long as he doesn't talk to you. But, God. yeah, he's always unnoticed. Can awesome. You, can you imagine trying to get some girl's attention and your mutant powers forget me not? I feel like I have that with girls already. So, yeah, there you go. Number seven on the list is the almighty dollar, J. Pennington Penny Packer. <laughs> named it, him. Um, Stan Lee character. Yeah. He's also a CPA. And he's, well, he shoots pennies out of his hand. That's what he does. <laughs> Instead of ending up being run by a mad scientist who, who conducted experiments on the campers, the experiments gave Penny Packer the ability to shoot pennies from his wrist. Hence, he called himself the Almighty Dollar. And he became an ally to another person that's on this list coming oh, no. up, by the way. Um. If you had the ability to shoot pennies out of your wrist, don't you like, sweet, I never have to worry about money ever again. I mean, kind of. His thought was, sweet, I'm going to fire them at bad guys. Because you'd have to shoot them like into a jar. Right. And then spend time rolling them up. But yeah, you would never run out of money. And it's 50 cents per roll that you get. You got to yeah. take all that to the bank. I think I would take the time if I was making... Just making it happen. Just pay other people to do it, right? Make Superman do it. I mean, now they've got penny counters, right? And automatic Ooh. rollers and all that. Just hire the Flash. He does everything so fast. Right. There you go. So, yeah, that's... uh, And, man, they had to make him a CPA. Well, he had to be. Right? Couldn't be a motorcycle mechanic. And they had to give him the name Penny Packer. I mean, Penny Packer should have been in the name of his actual superhero name, not the Almighty Dollar. Colby, if you could live forever, uh -huh. but every time you farted, pennies shot out your butt. I mean, yeah, take it. With the crap, though. I mean, sure. So they're poop-covered pennies that shoot out of your butt, but you get to live forever. Yeah, no, I'm in. All right. And if what, I ever, what are you going to do with the money? If I ever need change, you know. Eat a taco? There you go. I mean, it's a little bit of shit to go through, but pays off at the end number six on today's list is dun, 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 the 3d man he has three d's no this is actually 3d man is actually and technically two people brothers chuck and hall chandler chuck was working as a test pilot when the scroll invasion commenced so Hal witnessed his brother seemingly disintegrate after a Skrull spaceship exploded and unleashed intense radiation. Oh, wow. However, Hal later realized that his, brother Im his brother's image somehow got imprinted on his glasses. Chuck was now a two-dimensional being, but when Hal concentrated, he could make Chuck three-dimensional again, hence dubbing him 3D Man. Who in the hell came up with this one night, and what drugs were they on? All the drugs. When 3D Man was summoned, he had triple Chuck's speed, strength, durability, and senses. So he was three senses and definition man. He had triple. So he was three times stronger. 
three times faster. All of that. So 3D man. Okay, Colby. So this makes sense because 3D man's first appearance uh -huh. in April of 1977. So everyone was doing all of the drugs in 1977. Yes. And also, I mean, it's 3D comics, bro. Huh. You know, because that was really when people started like, hey, we can do this three dimensional thing. Huh. So, yeah. So there you go. 3D Interesting. man. Interesting. All you need is, by the way, to defeat him, all you need is four humans because he's as strong as three people. Right. You just need four. Number five on today's list is Paste Pot Pete. Paste Pot Pete definitely wins the award for having the absolute worst alias out of anyone on this list. His real name is Peter Petruski. So Paste Pot Pete, Peter Petruski, that's, mm. he was born in Indiana. Later in life, he developed a, a patented type of paste, which made him pretty wealthy. Money didn't seem to be enough for him, though. Hence, he named himself Paste Pot Pete, armed himself with a gun filled with paste, and donned a costume and tried to be a supervillain. Poor man's Batman. Yeah. Of course, he got made fun of relentlessly for his nickname and costume. Eventually, he did change his name to the Trapster and became a formidable villain who joined the Frightful Four. However, he mainly just failed a lot and got reminded of his old nickname constantly. Paste Pot Pete. Ace Pot Pete. Oh. Fresh out of the 90s and a friend of the one, the almighty dollar, coming in at number four, NFL Super Pro. Yes! Tom in, Brady. In the 1990s, the NFL and Marvel collaborated to create the NFL Super Pro. The NFL Super Pro was Phil Grayfield, a former football player who became a sports reporter after a knee injury derailed his career. One day... While on assignment to interview a Timmy's super fan, Grayfield is confronted by a band of thieves. They steal some sports memorabilia, of course they did, and then set the place on fire. So, okay, so then somehow the chemist potions mixed with the fumes with the sports memorabilia and gives Grayfield powers. The chemist then gives him an indestructible football uniform modeled after Captain America's suit, and he becomes the NFL Super Pro. In other words, he's pretty much becomes a walking advertisement for the NFL. It's the greatest thing ever. He fights villains like the Quick Kick and Instant Replay. The Quick Kick. And uses football phrases frequently, such as bellowing out touchdown on way too often. The NFL Super Pro is the example of why you don't mix football in Marvel comics. He just has about the most nonsensical orange origin story of any Marvel hero, and his comic book issues are filled with cheesy football tie-ins. There you go. Good Lord, what are we doing, NFL? The NFL Super Pro. It's Number awesome. three. I want to read that comic book. It's one of my favorites because... You talk about what kind of cocaine was going on or drugs. This is fluff, ladies and gentlemen. So, Peter Milligan and Mike Allred are known for creating unconventional comics, but they may have taken things a little bit too far when they, in, with the introduction of fluff, the creators had previously written some s series on X Force and X Static showing the fans that they weren't afraid of high stakes and the unexpected. Hence, many expected the same from The Excellent, a comic book series from the duo following a team of mutants. We didn't expect, though, that they were going to drop a mutant with belly button lint powers. Fluff can create as much belly button lint as he can think of creating and use that to thwart bad guys. I mean, I got some of that. Am I a superhero? Can you create it on, on demand, Tim? I don't know. It just seems to always be there. So 
Zayat Geist, the leader of Excellent, quickly got sick of Fluff undermining his power and had him killed. Thus the end of the belly button lint guy. But there for a little bit, you could pick up a comic book and read about a guy that create belly button lint. It's the greatest thing ever. So there you go. At number two, Dr. Bong. Like I knew him in elementary school. The sad thing about Dr. Bong is that his name isn't even the worst part about him. Dr. Bong is a man named Lester Verde. As a child, Verde was bullied by relentlessly, so he started coming up with creative insults to hur hurl at his tormentors. His penchant for insulting people turned him into writing exaggerated exposés in college to get his professor fi professors fired if they didn't agree with him or get his fellow classmates kicked out of college if he was jealous of them. He also aggressively pursued a woman named Barbara Switzler, despite her clearly rejecting him numerous times, which is less sad than creepy and gross. Verde then became a rock music critic to impress Switzler, but ended up losing his hand in an accident while performing with the band. So... What does all this have to do with him becoming Dr. Bong? Not much. One day, Verde just magically transformed into Dr. Bong and became a genius. No explanation said. That's like some of the current movies. He just showed up with a, with a head and a bell, used his genetic expertise to turn Howard the Duck into a human, and forced Switzler to marry him. Yeah, there's no reason that Dr. Bong became Dr. Bong. It's just he had a bad childhood, but he was really creative at insults. And then he turned Howard the Duck into a human and married the woman he was stalking. So is he then called Howard the Human? No, he finds a way to become a duck again. Oh, he switched back? Yeah. Was before or after he had sex with Leah Thompson? Oh, no, that was after. I liked Leah Thompson until I saw her having sex with a duck. Still one of the most confusing points of my childhood. It was the beginning of that movie where there was duck boobs. Yep. And I was like, there's boobs. But they're duck boobs. But they're duck. Are they still hot? I mean, I think I'm attracted. Come well, that's something for me. At least I'm down. <laughs> and finally, at number one. Getting there. Hindsight lad. I like his rear view mirrors. So. And how can he see the rear view the mirrors first, on the side of his head? The first guy, Bailey Hoskins, is pretty useless character because, you know, he can blow up and he can only blow up once. But at least he's a mutant and does have a power. The same can't be said for Carlton Lafroy. Lafroy is just a regular all be it a naturally annoying guy who happens to discover Speedball's real identity, identity as Robbie Baldwin. By the way, that's a mutant. He then demands to be allowed to join Baldwin and the superhero team in the New Warriors or else he'll reveal Speedball's secret identity to the world. Hence, he weaseled his way into being on the superhero team despite having no powers or abilities. The only thing he could kind of do was reflect on how events could have played out differently in hindsight. That's the reason for him being hindsight lad. Oh, and it's the most confusing costume. Because he has rear view mirrors like a car. Right. But they're on the side of his head, so he can't see the rear view mirrors. Just letting you know that out, out of all the Iron Man and Daredevils and Punishers, there's also these guys, as for, they're just not that great. For every pretty awesome superhero, there's probably 10 that are questionable. Oh, there may be more than that. More than 10, 20, 30? There may be more than that. So there you go.